On Acoustic Tuesday, episode 30, you're gonna hear a voice that will make you cry, learn about a safety device for your guitar, and you get to gawk at some incredible guitar snows from our very own Acoustic Tuesday family. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 30. I cannot believe we are on episode number 30. And since I'm thinking about episodes and things, I wanna make sure you never miss an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. So right this very second, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the subscribe button, and then don't forget to click that little bell so you get notified about every new video. And of course, if you want Acoustic Tuesday delivered directly to your email, all you have to do is click on the link in the description below and you'll get it directly to your email and get access to my guitar geek list, which is something you definitely do not want to miss. Welcome officially to Acoustic Tuesday, episode 30. I cannot believe this is the 30th episode. And of course, what makes the Acoustic Tuesday clock tick are none other than Officer Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first, <laughs> and of course, Levi Quila, the man Noah. with the technical plan. Hey, Tony. Plan, Levi. rather. Uh, gentlemen. Tony. Noah. <laughs> Tony. Uh, I was going to ask you a different question today, but... Um, yes. Can you explain your uh, sergeant outfit that you got going on? Is that what I look Tactical like? sergeant a or G.I. Joe? Yeah, bike can you tell? Cop? I'm yeah. excited. I, I, re I just got a new bike, and I'm ready to hit the pavement. I'm so ready that I'm going to jump on right after the show. <laughs> Apparently, your, is your head is going to hit the pavement at some point, but if hopefully it, not. If it does... <laughs> well, you know, since you have a helmet, yes. your head will never hit the pavement. That's right. If you didn't have a helmet... Yeah. If you showed up with that bike and you didn't have a helmet, I would have I would have asked you to please go get a helmet. And by bike, you mean actual little pedal bike. Yeah. Yes, it's got a, even yeah. got a cool little bell on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm excited. I can, I can just imagine the whole as thing. you should be, as yes. you should be. Okay. No, looking forward to the report. <laughs> speaking of speaking of excitement, do you guys are you guys do you guys have any particular segment that you're you're looking forward to in today's show? I do. Go I, ahead, Levi. Since you raise your hand. I am, yeah, <laughs> I am partial to uh, the Chris P photo. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's pretty uh, rad. <laughs> there's a lot of cuteness. There's a lot of guitar and mm -hmm. uh, so do you have one, Noah? I agree. We were talking about that earlier. I think that's mine, too. Okay. I, all right. Honestly. I mean, it's all good stuff, but I can't wait for that. Well, so, without further ado, let's dive into the Acoustic Tuesday show, and of course, uh, in normal Acoustic Tuesday tradition... We have to kick off with a little bit of Guitar Geek trivia. So your question to ponder for today is as follows. What company did Gibson Guitar purchase that eventually led to Bozeman, Montana, becoming Gibson's home for acoustic guitar production? Was it A, Vega Banjos, B, Black Diamond Strings, C, Flatiron Mandolins, or D, Gibson didn't buy a company, they just chose to move to move to Sh Bozeman. Uh, so what's that? Chose? chose. Chose? They didn't. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. That was the D answer. <laughs> it had been chosen by them that they would then move to Bozeman. <laughs> Option D was Gibson did not purchase a company. They just chose to move to Bozeman, Montana. So go ahead and ponder that as we dive into your list of guitar geekiness. That is, of course, Acoustic Tuesday, starting with item number five. You know, usually I I wait to reach out to our bearded brother, Matt, from Eddie's Guitars in St. Louis, but I figured, you know what? We're gonna kick episode 30 off with an Ask Matt. So Matt is gonna go ahead and discuss the 12 fret body neck joint versus the 14 fret body neck joint. And rather than me trying to go into any diatribe about it, I'm just gonna let Matt go ahead and take it away. Happy Acoustic Tuesday, friends. Matt with Eddie's Guitars coming to you, as always, from St. Louis, Missouri. And ahoy mateys to Tony, Noah, and Levi. Thanks for having me back again for another segment of Ask Matt. We have a very worthy question today that comes in from J.P. Limehouse. Uh, he asked 12 fret versus 14 fret neck joints. What's the difference and why? Great question and uh, one that I would certainly love to address. And 
Right off the bat, there's probably a, a, a glaringly obvious difference between a 14 fret neck joint and a 12 fret neck joint. Um, the fingerboard access that you have comfortably uh, at your reach there. Of course, a 12 fret guitar. Uh, the body comes in here right at the 12th fret. This is a very, very traditional design. The way uh, flat top acoustic guitars were built for many, many years. And of course, in the late 20s, early 30s, the um, the 14 fret neck joint became more a thing of the norm. And of course, obviously, you have two extra frets here that are easily accessible on the fingerboard. Um, but beyond those obvious differences, there are some key elements to uh, keep in mind from a uh, both a sound and a playability standpoint. On a 14 fret guitar, the body uh, is, is kind of a certain size and it's relatively compact, not quite as elongated as a 12 fret guitar. So you tend to get a little bit more focus out of the sound of the guitar. Um, that makes it great for finger style for sure, but, but really makes it great for anything that you want a little higher access on the neck as well. Uh, no doubt about that. There's some pretty cool things happening, if you ask me, on a 12 fret guitar though. Um, because this body is elongated, the, uh, the bridge of the guitar actually sits further back into the gut of the guitar towards the lower bouts than what the 14 fret neck will give you. Um, the X brace of the guitar, uh, where the X brace meets, I should say, sits right around in this area here. And this bridge is physically further away from that center of the X brace. That's very important to the design of the guitar as um, the further you get that bridge away from the X, uh, the more influence uh, that break angle has transmitting energy into the top of the guitar and exciting the top of the guitar. What all that means is basically you tend to have, if all other things are as equal as possible, you tend to have a little bit easier response out of um, out of a 12 fret guitar like this because it's, it's further away, more in a kind of a sweet spot in the top of the guitar, which is pretty neat. Um, from a sound standpoint, uh, you usually get a little bit broader voice, a little less focus to the individual notes than what a 14 fret guitar will give you. So this, this will give you a little broader sound. I like to say a little bit breathier sound as well with usually a little bit more bottom end uh, happening there in the mix of the guitar as well. In fact, we've been selling a good deal of um, uh, 12 fret uh, kind of triple O size guitars just like this beautiful Santa Cruz here to folks that maybe are more accustomed to a dreadnought guitar but don't want that big long reach out in front of them uh, nor the body depth that is typically associated with a dreadnought guitar. Uh, the reason why this would be a good choice for flat picking and even really strong rhythm is because of the elongated body, because of the uh, bridge placement in relation to where that X brace falls under the top of the guitar. So um, certainly some, some design differences there. Uh, certainly no right or wrong. It, it really boils down to a matter of personal preference. Uh, both can be used for a, a, just a wide variety of different styles of music as, um, you know, just in particular a, a 12 fret triple O or a 14 fret OM or triple O. Both very versatile guitars. Just a matter of how much focus do you want to that sound, how much bass response do you want out of that sound. So, um, JP, again, thank you very much for the question. We certainly appreciate it. And as always, if you have a question of your own, do not hesitate to leave it in the comments below. Put hashtag Ask Matt. Put your question afterwards, and we will address it in a following episode on Acoustic Tuesday. And until then, party on. So thank you, Matt, for reporting from the front lines. And as Matt said, if you have a question for him, just in the comments below, please put hashtag ask Matt and go ahead and put your question in. Moving on to item number four, the safety device for your instrument. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's the scenario. You're at home, your guitar has a pickup in it, but you like playing with the strap. So you go ahead and put the strap on, stand up, and lo and behold, the strap slips off the input jack end of the guitar, creating a, a 
pretty bad scenario for any guitar geek. We don't ever want the guitar to actually come unhinged from us, unattached, if you will. That's why item number four is the strap jack security system, I'll call it. It's not officially the strap jack security system. It's just called the strap jack. But this is a very cool little piece of plastic that can save your guitar's life, especially, actually only if, it has an input jack for an acoustic pickup. So here's what it is. It's a little plastic device that once you put the strap over the input jack on the lower bout end of your guitar, the strap jack actually goes inside the input jack and creates kind of a, a security system so the strap won't slip off. And the system also comes with a little rubber washer that you can put around the other strap button of your guitar. So it will never slip off either strap button. Uh, when I saw this, I thought it was absolutely ingenious. It's a little small ABS piece of plastic. And what what I love about it is that it's it's relatively inexpensive. Um, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it on the Strapjack site, both of which you can find at AcousticTuesdayShow.com. Just click on episode 30. Uh, you'll find the links to both of those, but I think it's only about $8, $9. And, um, I mean, that's to me, that's totally worth it to save your guitar. And it's it's a it's an inexpensive enough accessory that you can get one for each guitar with an input jack and kind of keep it in its case uh, just for those uh, just in case moments. So a very cool accessory that I wanted to share with you guitar geeks because it could truly save some guitars out there. So make sure to check that out, especially if you enjoy playing standing up and don't always plug in. I, I, it'll definitely be a guitar saver. That is for sure. Now, I want to move on to what I'm listening to because I'm really excited. It has a past connection with a previous Acoustic Tuesday artist, but uh, the mailbag is here today, albeit small, but it, it's here. I ordered some guitar hangers for my house, so uh, so those came into the mailbag, and I'm pretty excited because I get to hang some guitars. I've got this, I uh, just moved, Whitney and I just moved, and uh, we're living in some silos. Uh, really, they're, they're grain silos that have been converted to a home living unit and the walls are round and I'm figuring, what should I put on the walls? And uh, as any guitar geek would, well, you put guitars on the walls. That's what you do. So that's the mailbag. And again, I want to get to what I'm listening to this week, but you know, the whole, you know, you're a guitar geek when uh, has really taken off. I mean, the, the, the comments keep flooding in and Noah has cherry picked some absolute beauties for us. So Noah, let's, let's, let's tell us how we know we're guitar geeks. Absolutely, Tony. And uh, I think I know why you chose the phrase security system <laughs> with your strap. I was going to actually item. refer to you as Commander Noah, but I, I'm just not quite sure whether it's a G.I. Joe thing you're going for or a tactical officer or... I'm going for a serious bikeman. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, you're doing pretty good. Feel the burn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, now, by the way, these, you know, you're a guitar geek wens come in from AT viewers and they post them in the comments and that's where I'm pulling them from. Awesome. And so here we go. Uh, Vic says, you know, you're a guitar geek when you watch a gear review video from a popular guitar magazine and you realize that you know more about the Taylor V Class Builders Edition K14 CE guitar than the reviewer does. <laughs> <laughs> and Caleb, you know you're a guitar geek when the local music store calls you up about the weird acoustic that just came in. <laughs> Fellas, it was a Gretsch with a triangle French sound hole. Okay? That is way cool. <laughs> You're on the hot call list. <laughs> John, you know you're a guitar geek when you take pictures of the UPS man delivering your daughter's new Epiphone guitar case. <laughs> Ian, Ian says, uh, you know you're a guitar geek when your wife finds you in the water closet with your guitar. No way. <laughs> That's what he said. One of the best practice rooms available. Just, right? Just saying. Natural yeah. reverb. Yeah, oh, I yeah. totally get it. All right, Matt says, you know you're a guitar geek when you transport $5,000 worth of gear in a $500 car to a $50 <laughs> paying gig. <laughs> that is good. That's a good one. That's uh, a fantastic one. Isaiah, you know you're a guitar geek when your spouse informs you that you've been talking in your sleep multiple times about guitar stuff like the effect of flat pick thickness on tone. <laughs> this is incredible. And that's a thing. Tony, are you not having dreams lately? Uh, 
Oh, I just said today, and this is no this is no joke. This isn't something I'm just randomly saying. I for the last two nights I've had dreams about the Acoustic Life Festival. Mm-hmm. I, and that's not, I'm not even kidding about that. Just about the artists and, and actually being able to play with them, maybe. I don't know if that'll happen, but that's what the dream's centered on. It makes sense. You yeah. are a guitar geek. <laughs> All right. Roy, you know you're a guitar geek when, you're, when you are buying new guitars and keeping them at your neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sharon says, you know you're a guitar geek when you're lying down and you realize that, that the weird feeling in your bed is your husband practicing his fretting and picking in his sleep true story (laughs) i get it like the dogs do the whole like running thing chasing right 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 guitar (laughs) players are just like twitching out with their (laughs) flat (laughs) all right and les says you know your guitar geek when you know more about bands and musicians than you know about your wife (laughs) and our last just uh, keep that birthday and anniversary just keep those two right Yes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and our last one for today comes from John. You know you're a guitar geek when you drive around with a snark tuner clipped on your rearview mirror. That's a real thing. I like that. And it, it's a very convenient place to have it. Because then when you go to a guitar store, it's, it's always there. You don't even have to ask anybody for a tuner. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Well, Sergeant No, I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you for reporting the uh, You Know You're a Guitar Geek When segment. Uh, and of course, if you want to go ahead and complete that sentence, it's really easy. In the comments below, hashtag You Know You're a Guitar Geek When, and then go ahead and complete the sentence. Uh, what we've been getting so far have been uh, absolutely hilarious. The people that have responded, I mean, kudos to you guys. It's, it's really, truly awesome. So moving on to item number three, what I'm listening to this week. Now, prior on Acoustic Tuesday, I featured uh, Coulter Wall, and that was actually brought to my attention by Acoustic Tuesday viewer and TAC member uh, Andrew D. Now, on Coulter Wall's album, his latest album, he does the traditional tune Fraulein, and he has this guest vocalist join him, and I thought, man, I really like the way this guy sings. I like the way the two sing together. And lo and behold, it was this artist in, uh, named Tyler Childers. And then in another episode of Acoustic Tuesday, in the comments, somebody said, hey, you should check out Tyler Childers. So I thought this, I took both of these things as a sign. So I went ahead and checked out Tyler Childers, and holy smokes, uh, we're talking a uh, major vocal powerhouse here. Uh, uh, not just vocal powerhouse, songwriting as well, but vocally, uh, it reminds me of traditional country and traditional bluegrass kind of mixed and infused with a little bit of whiskey grit thrown in there and it's just his songwriting is descriptive storytelling uh some of the metaphors and things that he uses are incredible so let's let's have a listen here real quick to tyler childers see the ways of this world will just bring you to tears Keep the Lord in your heart, you'll have nothing to fear. Live the best that you can, and don't lie, and don't steal. Keep your nose on the grindstone and out of the pills. All right, so that was a quick snippet of his tune, Keep Your Nose on the Grindstone. And I want you, uh, if you want to do a full deep dive on Tyler's music, please go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com, click on episode 30. I've selected a couple other songs for you uh, to check out, uh, that being one of them, another one entitled Purgatory, which actually is the same name of his newest album, which is out now, and of course his previous album as well, uh, Bottles and Bibles. And his, it's just a really... Uh, uh, kind of a complete package of an artist. You know, when you hear somebody sing like that and using, uh, you know, h- h- with his songwriting, it's, it's just, it's a match made in heaven, in my opinion. And uh, I'm super happy to have discovered him uh, with, of course, your help and, uh, uh, of course, Coulter Wall's help as well. So uh, make sure to check out Tyler Childers. I don't think you'll be disappointed uh, one bit. Now, I, I want to go to item number two because item number two is actually generated by an Acoustic Tuesday viewer as well. But first, First, I want to check in with uh, Corporal Noah over here for some small wins. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, small wins today. Now, this uh, first one comes from 0138. And remember, this is from last week's <coughs> AT episode. You all right? 
Yeah, at the you know, just a wrong tube issue. Okay. Small win <laughs> from 0138. Played my first open mic on Thursday and then had other musicians come and tell me they were nervous to go up after me. Oh, as someone man. who's never done that, I took that as a huge honor. And he says, also, tomorrow is my birthday. This is last Wednesday now. Okay. Also, tomorrow is my birthday, and I'll be hashtag Scotch win. I dig that. Drinking some Dalmore 12. Well, happy birthday, and congratulations on uh, not only your first open mic, but it sounds like it went very well. That's fantastic. I'm not sure what to say about the Scotch, but I, I guess that's a congratulatory thing. It is. You don't yeah. have to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next small win up uh, for today comes from Music Lover 98. I think it's nine eight. Small win today. I had <laughs> today. I had the opportunity to pass some knowledge on to a beginner guitar player. That's awesome. That's a that's an awesome win. That's a thanks huge for win. sharing that. And GW small win just added to my guitar arsenal a new Yamaha FGTA, awesome. which is TA is transatlantic, right? Transacoustic. Oh, thank you. Transacoustic. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, transacoustic. That sounds great. Awesome. Very cool. That's a great addition to your guitar arsenal. And that's our small wins. Awesome. Today. Well, thank you. Thank you, Noah, for sharing the small wins. And of course, if you want a small win, or if you rather want, if you want to share a small win on the Acoustic Tuesday show, it's super easy. In the comments below, put hashtag small win and go ahead and describe it for us. Maybe you taught somebody else something brand new. Maybe you got a new guitar. Maybe you went to a killer show. Whatever the case is, uh, we want to know. So hashtag small win and go ahead and describe it in the comments below. Let's move on to item number two, because item number two, uh, this actually was in the mailbag last week on Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, Michael P., Acoustic Tuesday viewer, sent us uh, a really cool package. It was uh, um, the Group of Seven Guitar Project documentary on DVD, and he wrote a note uh, using the Acoustic Room uh, music store, uh, their bag, as the note. So it was kind of a, a total guitar geek package. So thanks again, Michael P. But I want to bring to your attention exactly what item number two is, and that is the Group of Seven Guitar Project documentary. Now, I just watched it last night. Sorry, guys, I didn't invite you over. It was, it was kind of a date night, so I figured Whitney and I would watch this documentary. Fair enough. <laughs> Which Fair was enough. really funny because it took a lot of convincing on my part. But she dug it. She dug it. So the whole premise of this Group of Seven Guitar Project is that seven Canadian luthiers drew inspiration from seven Canadian landscape painters from the 20s and 30s known as the Group of Seven. And, I mean, we're talking major luthiers. I'm not going to remember them off the top of my head, but Grit Laskin, Linda Manzer, uh, Jean Lerve, Sergei de Young, um, uh, David Wren, uh, Tony Duggan-Smith. I might have got them all. I might have forgot one, though. If I forgot one, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have it written down. Um, but anyways, the documentary follows uh, the luthiers and their creation of these guitars. And what I love about it is you actually get to kind of get an get a, uh, insight into what they're thinking as they're building these guitars. And, of course, these guitars are inspired by paintings from these famous landscape painters. And each of their approaches... Are, are very different, but it's cool to see the end result and also see how these luthiers are actually all connected. They all, at one point in time, uh, had actually apprenticed under Jean Larivet. So it's fascinating for any guitar geek. It features the guitars, it features the luthiers, it features playing, uh, so it's all there. So I would encourage you to check it out. You can actually get the DVD from Larivet's website. It's one of the only places I've found it. And of course, there's a link there on AcousticTuesdayShow.com, episode 30. And uh, there's a little, a cool little interview with Grit Laskin. This, this only shows a little bit of it, but uh, I want you to get a taste of how these luthiers talk and, and the passion with which they speak about their craft. So let's listen to Grit Laskin. I remember that until that moment it hadn't struck me that human beings build these things. There were the brands, the Martins and Gibsons and Guilds and all the, the ones you talked about as a guitar player. But I picked up a Larivé at the Folklore Center and I remember it sitting in playing position in my lap. And I'm looking down at the neck and I'm seeing where the headstock veneer is glued to the mahogany of the neck. And I'm staring at that joint, and I couldn't see any glue. And I had no earthly idea how you accomplished something like that, how you glued two pieces of wood together 
and you only saw one wood end and the other begin. You didn't see glue. And I thought, my God, it's like a miracle. How do you do this? And it just fascinated me. I've never forgotten. I, I can close my eyes and I'm back there in the Folklore Center in, in this would be the summer of 1971. <laughs> My name is Grit Laskin. My real name is William, but I've been called Grit since I was nine years old, so that's what I go by. I'm a guitar maker. I'm partners in a record company. I'm uh, the creator of Canadian Folk Music Awards. And uh, I play some music. I write. I live. Well, Inlay uh, began with John. I mean, uh, we, everybody who makes guitars learns to cut a piece of mother of pearl or abalone shell, because that's the tradition. It was really when I was on my own, very gradually and slowly, I began pushing myself on what I did in the subject matter. I can even remember the first time I did a portrait of a woman, and I was, I think, probably copying a mukha drawing or something like that, but reproducing it in, in shell and engraving, and even the engraving I had to teach myself. So it just came through the years. Uh, and somewhere in the 70s, I was flipping through a book on the art of Maxfield Parrish, the early 20th century illustrator, and I was looking at a painting of some humorous characters that he depicted, and all of a sudden I saw this one clown character looking like he could be walking, even though he wasn't, but I had this image of him walking onto the headstock of the guitar. And I'd never thought of the headstock as the viewfinder of a camera, or, or some other way that I might have learned if I had ever taken any art training. So it had to hit me a little, a little moment, and I saw it differently. And so I did that, I duplicated this character, but you didn't see him, all of him, you just saw part of him walking onto the peghead, but I tried to show enough body language so you read that this guy is in motion. And that changed everything for me on how I saw what happened on this little headstock space. So what I've tried to depict here on the neck portion of the inlay was uh, elements of Varley's history that I gravitated to. And, and that's what drew me into him in the first place, actually, because he was known more for portraits than any of the other group of seven. And in the inlay art that I All right, so that was just a quick little snippet of the guitar, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the Group of Seven Guitar Project documentary. And if, you, if, you lo if, if you've loved at all the way that Grit spoke about the guitars and guitar building, uh, I strongly, strongly recommend this documentary. And again, a huge thanks to Michael P. for sending that uh, to us here to, uh, to watch and, uh, and take in. It's, it's really fascinating and, and, and inspirational on, on a whole different level that I didn't expect. Uh, now, now at this point of the show, I'm absolutely jonesing for item number one because there are some killer guitar signals that I want you to see. I mean, there's some really great stuff happening this week. Uh, but I want to know what you think of the show so far. So in the comments below, let me know what you think. Maybe you made a new discovery. Maybe you want us to make a new discovery. Heck, just let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, we love to know and we love to hear from you. So in the comments below, just go ahead and type that in. And uh, speaking of comments, Noah, can we give some shout outs to the folks that watched last week and share some of those comments? It would be my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so some shout outs <clears throat> to those who tuned in to last week's AT episode. George, David, Andy, Mark, Vic, Drew, John, Diane, Jesse, Shannon, Ian, Les, Matt, Brian, Cal, Roy, Bob, Guy, and of course, many more. And the comments that we have today from last week's AT episode, first one comes from Michael. Uh, and he also precedes his comment with a hashtag thank you. After a crazy, crazy day at work, I get to geek out on Acoustic Tuesday to bring me back to something I truly love, which is the guitar. Uh, it brings me back to my true self. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Cheers. That's awesome. And the second comment also happens to come from a Michael, a different Michael, who says, loving taking some time out on my Tuesdays to watch. Thanks so much. Awesome. Cheers. Thanks for watching. 
And our last comment for today comes from Cash and Ryder. And they say, best guitar channel on YouTube. Y'all do an amazing job of making everyone feel included and part of it, as though we're all peers and you're not condescending at all, which makes newer players like me more motivated. Oh, wow, thanks. Well, that's an awesome comment. Yeah, well, I thought that, that that's the kind of stuff, that's exactly what we're about. That's well, the, Absolutely. We, we guitar talk about Geeks that. Uniting. Exactly. Yeah, that comment actually we, we spoke about at length. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> but that's that's the whole vibe we want to create. We just want to have a place where you guys can go, disconnect from your everyday, and just be a guitar geek for a half hour, 45 minutes, and just hang with us, learn about new gear, learn new things, and share a laugh, or a glass of bourbon, scotch, water, coffee, whatever you choose to drink. Um, so, so thank you for everybody that left comments. And speaking of, of uniting guitar geeks, the more guitar geeks we get watching Acoustic Tuesday, the more guitar geeks effectively unite. So I want you to share this show with your guitar geek friends. Please do it, let them know, tell them about it, send them an email. I want you to encourage them to watch the show and just take it all in and come be a guitar geek with us uh, for uh, and every Tuesday for at least a half an hour. So uh, please share this show with your guitar geek buddies. And with that, I think it's time to move to item number one which happens to be us gawking at some guitar signals uh, from our very own uh, Acoustic Tuesday viewers. And uh, I gotta tell you, this, this is a great lineup of guitar signals. It's, it's hard for me to, to, to wade through all the guitar signals that are coming in. And of course, before I get into the guitar signals, if you want your guitar signal featured in an Acoustic Tuesday, it's super easy. Three steps. Number one, Grab yourself a guitar signal shirt. If you don't have one already, there's a link right beneath the video. You can go ahead and click on that, get your size, get your color, and have it delivered right to your door. Step two, gather all the things that, that resemble your acoustic life. All the guitars, the family members that help you on your guitar journey, your furry friends, your neighbors, whatever the case may be. Get everybody all together in one spot, and most importantly, make sure your guitars are there. Step three, go ahead and take a picture and send it to support at TonyPolacastro.com with the subject heading hashtag guitar signal. That's all you have to do to get your guitar signal featured on Acoustic Tuesday. And I gotta tell you, there's a ton coming in and they're really, really fun to look at. And this batch is, is pretty outstanding. I think you'll be surprised by the last one too. Uh, so let's start off with Acoustic Tuesday viewer Banjo Boy, who is a, a huge fan of Acoustic Tuesday. He's got a Strat hanging on the wall. He's got a banjo, of course, well, with a screen name like that, you kind of have to. And he has what I think is a Godin uh, Fifth Avenue arch top, with it, which is just a, a stellar, stellar instrument. So thank you very much for submitting your guitar signal. Let's move on to Brad W's guitar signal. Brad's guitar signal is, is pretty extensive. I mean, it's it, there's a lot of guitars in there. There's actually a story that goes along with it as well. But I do want to highlight that white Gretsch and also the tailor that he's holding. Uh, both instruments caught my eye. But here's what Brad said when he sent in his guitar signal. He said, first time I've ever had them all out at one time. The better half made quite a few are you done yet jokes as I brought them out one by one. And his reply, no, dear, I will never be done. Guitar geeks of the world stand tall and proud. Uh, so thank you very much, Brad, for sharing your guitar signal with us. And next up is both Levi and Noah's favorite guitar signal. I had a hard time picking a favorite. This is Chris P and Camille. Uh, Chris P's guitar signal is complete with child. Yes, he has a child with him. Uh, his daughter Camille, who is rocking a tie-dye guitar shirt and has a bit of a rock star stance, if I do say so myself. Um, but a couple highlights from, from Chris P's guitar signal of course, including uh, your daughter is a huge, huge plus and probably the most number one plus. Uh, but we also have a composite acoustic cargo carbon fiber travel guitar. And get this, his maternal grandfather's 1952 Gibson J45. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I see two J45s there. Well, the other one is a 2008 Gibson J45 vintage. So I'm pretty sure if we asked Chris what his favorite guitar was, it's probably uh, maybe a J45. I'm not 100% sure on that. We'd have to follow up. So uh, thank you, Chris and Camille, for uh, posing for that shot and sharing your guitars with us. Next up, we have Rick M. Now, Rick M's collection, I, I want to say it's like... <sighs> 
It's got the rarities and the oddities that totally caught my eye. Um, he's holding two instruments that are very cool, and I'll get to those in a second. But let's let me let me give you a quick rundown of what he's got in his collection. Not everything, but some highlights: uh, an Alvarez baritone guitar, an ABT 60E, a Gibson Hummingbird Pro. A 71, 1971 Alvarez 5021 12 string. Now, this guitar cruised with him on the Carriers Enterprise, Ranger, Coral Sea, and Carl Vinson. So that is a well traveled guitar for sure. And then let's get to some really geeky rare stuff. He is holding a Showalter number 43. Now, upon research, he actually sent me a link to Showalter guitars, some really cool handcrafted guitars, so thank you for sharing that, Rick. And also, he's holding a Sipsy River Steel. Uh, entitled Large Acoustic Number no. 2, and that's actually made from a Cypress knee. It's it's actually a lap style guitar and a very, very cool guitar, if I, if I don't say so myself. Uh, you exposed me to two brand new luthiers, so thank you for sharing your guitar signal with all of us, and uh, um, thanks for exposing me to, to a couple new luthiers. Now, last but certainly not least, I've got a little bit of surprise. So at the beginning of the show, we heard from Matt, our, our front lines correspondent from Eddie's Guitars, and Matt just received his guitar signal shirt, and he was extremely anxious to take a picture so let me uh, share with you what he's got there so that is his daughter Ella holding her Yamaha FG Jr. and she's wearing a bourgeois shirt and I don't think anything I mean that right there that screams guitar geek family you know Matt's got his guitar signal shirt Ella's got her bourgeois shirt I mean good taste guys very good taste so she's holding of course her Yamaha FG Jr. and he is holding his bourgeois OMSC fingerstyle custom next to him is a Don Grosh NOS retro and a Tokai Talbo Woody uh, both on the couch and he says in his email he said uh, we didn't ask the dogs to join in for the picture but they ended up there anyway so we have uh, Dr. Emmett Brown, who's sitting on the couch. That's the dog's name. I think that's fantastic. And uh, you can just barely see in front of in front of um, in front of Ella holding her guitar is uh, Marty McFly's head. It's a it's a black dog, so you got to look closely. It's kind of like a Where's Waldo thing there. But uh, thank you, Matt, for including the family and including uh, the pets. That is a, a double win. And uh, just everybody, thank you so much for sharing your guitar signals with us. Uh, they're a treat to look at, and it's cool to connect with you guys. And again, it's really easy to feature your guitar signal on an Acoustic Tuesday show. Step number one, grab the shirt just by clicking that link beneath the video. Step Step two, get everybody together, guitars and family and pets included. Go ahead and snap a picture. Step three, send, send that picture to support at TonyPolacastro.com entitled hashtag guitar signal, and you could be featured on a future Acoustic Tuesday episode. Noah, every time I look at you, I feel like you're angry, but I just can't tell because I can't see your eyes. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're happy. Thank you. Uh, so, so episode 30 is nearly in the books. We're almost ready to wrap it up, but we've got to take a sneak peek into next week. And of course, I have to give you your trivia question answer. So let's quickly revisit what that trivia question was, and it is as follows: What company did Gibson Guitar purchase that eventually led to Bozeman, Montana, becoming Gibson's home for acoustic guitar production? A, Vega Banjos, B, Black Diamond Strings, C, Flatiron Mandolins, or D, Gibson didn't buy a company, they simply chose to move out to Bozeman, Montana. Well, if you answered C, Flatiron Mandolins, you are correct. Gibson bought Flatiron in 1987 and continued making mandolins uh, both under the Gibson and Flatiron name. In 1989, they started moving flat top production out here to Bozeman, and in 1990, it was official, production was launched, and all of the flat top acoustics officially began being made here in Bozeman, <coughs> Bozeman Montana. Excuse me. Pretty cool uh, uh, guitar geek slash local trivia. So I was pretty excited about that that question, and uh, hopefully, hopefully you got it right. So we are nearly done here. Let's take a quick sneak peek into next week to see what we're going to talk about on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 31. Well, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, we're going to look at a store that's dedicated to an upside down guitar's long lost cousin. We're going to become a fly on the wall to some of the most amazing songwriters ever, in my opinion, and. I found a completely random artist that I want to share with you. 
So be sure to tune in to Acoustic Tuesday next week at 10 a.m. And of course, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. You can catch it on YouTube or go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com to get it as an audio podcast. And of course, the all-important show notes, which go well beyond what I can cover in one full show. Again, that's AcousticTuesdayShow.com. It airs every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And please, please join us because, of course, we want all guitar geeks to unite. So from Noah, Levi, and myself, we wish you the best possible week. Keep strumming, keep smiling, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 10 for Acoustic Tuesday. Cheers.